Welcome back to Nautical Depths. Today, we're diving into the world of cold weather warfare, an area that poses unique challenges for troops operating in extreme conditions. Cold weather warfare, also known as Arctic warfare or winter warfare, involves military operations affected by snow, ice, thawing conditions, and extreme cold, both on land and at sea. This type of operation is prevalent year-round at high elevations or high latitudes and elsewhere materializes seasonally during the winter period. As you can imagine, cold weather conditions can make military operations even more challenging, requiring troops to adapt and overcome unique obstacles. From navigating snow-covered terrain to crossing frozen waterways, cold weather warfare demands specialized training and equipment. Mountain warfare often takes place in cold weather or on terrain that is affected by ice and snow, such as the Alps and the Himalayas. Historically, most such operations have been during winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Some have occurred above the Arctic Circle where snow, ice, and cold may occur throughout the year. At times, cold, or its aftermath, thaw, has been a decisive factor in the failure of a campaign, as with Napoleon's invasion of Russia in 1812 and the German invasion of Russia during World War II. Northern and Eastern Europe were the venues for some well-documented winter campaigns. During World War II, several actions took place above the Arctic Circle. Recent cold weather conflicts have occurred in the Himalayas. The icy waters of Lake Pipus witnessed the Teutonic Order's defeat in 1242. Centuries later, Sweden and Denmark clashed on frozen Lake Asunden in the fateful Battle of Bogesund. In 1658, Sweden's Charles Ten Gustav took advantage of a frozen Danish sea to besiege Copenhagen, securing a treaty that favored Sweden. The Great Northern War witnessed a bitter defeat for Charles XII of Sweden in his attempt to invade Moscow. Harsh cold weather and scorched earth tactics weakened his forces, leading to a crushing loss at the Battle of Poltava. Thousands of Swedish soldiers perished in the snow during the Karelian Death March. Also, World War II saw intense Arctic action with land and naval forces battling in regions like the Arctic Ocean, Finland, Norway, northern Russia, and Spitsbergen. These harsh environments taught valuable lessons in tactics, material, and personnel, shaping the future of winter warfare. Temperature, wind, snow, and thaw are the primary conditions that affect the winter battlescape. Snow and snowdrifts can create advantages on the battlefield by filling in ditches and vehicle tracks and flattening the terrain. It also creates hollows on the downwind side of obstacles, such as trees, buildings, and bushes, which provide observation points or firing positions. Thawing conditions can impair mobility and put soldiers at risk of trench foot by creating mud on the ground and by the weakening and breakup ice cover on bodies of water. Maintaining roads becomes more difficult during spring thaw runoff and requires mud removal by heavy equipment. Slushy and muddy ground causes clothing and equipment to become wet, damp, and dirty. Muddy conditions greatly inhibited Napoleon's ability to maneuver in Russia and also the German attempt to take Moscow in World War II. When it comes to cold weather operations, tactical maneuverability is critical, whether on foot or in vehicles. The long periods of darkness at higher latitudes during winter make night operations the norm, which can actually be enhanced by snow thanks to its high reflectivity and the visibility it provides against the white background. In order to establish and maintain trails over snow-covered terrain, vehicles can be employed to flatten the way. The first vehicle establishes a well-concealed track, followed by a second vehicle that travels offset from the track to flatten it, and subsequent vehicles that widen and flatten the trail further. By marking the trails, they can avoid being obliterated in snowstorms or drifting conditions. In mountainous terrain, tracked vehicles like tanks and infantry fighting vehicles rarely accompany dismounted infantry in the assault. Instead, they occupy positions where they can use their firepower to isolate enemy objectives and assist the ground troops. When troops need to move on foot, they often travel in a wedge-like column formation, which is slower than the inline file formation because no one is breaking the trail in undisturbed snow. The column formation is typically reserved for when there is imminent enemy contact, and as the slope angle increases, the amount of travel time is likely to increase substantially. During cold weather operations, water crossings can be a major obstacle. According to the U.S. Army, subarctic rivers are particularly challenging due to their many braided channels and swift currents. 
During spring and early winter, these rivers may become impassable due to freezing or thawing ice flows. However, once they are firmly frozen, rivers can offer routes for both mounted and dismounted movement. But not all areas freeze solidly during the coldest periods of winter, making it difficult for troops to move through swampy terrain. That's where ice bridges come in. These are constructed to thicken an iced-over waterway using pumps or some other means of flooding the ice-covered area when temperatures are below minus 12 degrees Celsius or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And the pre-existing natural ice is thicker than 10 centimeters or 4 inches to support the construction activity. Navigating water crossings in cold weather requires careful planning and execution, and troops must be prepared to adapt to changing conditions. But with the right techniques and equipment, even the most challenging water crossings can be conquered. Armies have made use of improvised and official snow camouflage uniforms and equipment since the First World War, such as in the fighting in the Dolomite Mountains between Austria and Italy. Snow camouflage was used far more widely in the Second World War by the Wehrmacht, the Finnish Army, the Red Army, and others. Since then, snow variants of disruptively patterned camouflage for uniforms have been introduced, sometimes with digital patterns. For example, the Bundeswehr has a Schneetarn snow variant of its widely used Flecktarn pattern. Snow, ice, frozen ground, and low temperatures also affect mine laying operations. Burying mines in a frost layer may be difficult requiring mines to be placed on top of the ground and then camouflaged. Snow or ice may prevent detonation, owing to freezing the firing device or isolating from pressure above. This can be mitigated with plastic laid over the top of the mine. Adaptations of military vehicles to winter operations include tire chains for maintaining traction of wheeled vehicles. Diesel engines start less well in cold and may require preheating or idling during cold periods. A variety of military vehicles have been developed for over-snow travel, including the Sisu Nasu, BVS-10, and M29 Weasel. In cold climates, frozen ground can make digging difficult. It's often necessary to use local materials, if suitable, for construction. Engineers must provide roadways, landing zones, shelter, water supply and wastewater disposal, and electrical power to encampments. Roadway and landing zones require heavy equipment which is more fatiguing to operate in the cold and necessary to protect from freezing. Snowstorms require cleanup and spring thaw requires management of thawed soil. Landing zones require stabilization of dust and snow to avoid blinding helicopter pilots. The U.S. Army has cold weather adaptive kits for providing water and electrical utilities. The tactical engineer has limited options for providing a water supply. They are in order of ease of provision drawing water from rivers or lakes, melting ice or snow, or drilling wells. The effects of global climate change are opening up a new frontier in the Arctic region. The northern shores of Alaska, Russia, and Canada, once locked in ice, are now accessible due to the melting ice caps, revealing a wealth of natural resources. As a result, countries with borders along the Arctic Ocean are increasing their military patrol activities in the region. According to the Military Times, Russia has reactivated 10 military bases, increased surface ship and aircraft patrols of its northern fleet, and conducted missile tests in the area. But Russia isn't the only country increasing its presence in the Arctic. The U.S. Navy is also gearing up with plans to have sufficient assets by 2030 to respond militarily in the region. As the Arctic region becomes more accessible, it's clear that military activity in the area is on the rise. The competition for resources and strategic advantages is heating up, and countries are taking notice. It remains to be seen how this increased military activity will shape the future of the region. So what do you think of all this? If you want to stay informed on the latest developments in this rapidly evolving situation, be sure to like share, and subscribe to Nautical Depths for more updates.